we have now a, a topic, a title which is pretty long. Technology trends shaping the mice industry. Any one of you an idea what I'm talking about? Not really, but you will in a few minutes. It is certainly accurate to say that the mice industry has faced challenges transitioning from the one difficult period to another. During the last four years, against this backdrop, technological advancements that can provide a competitive edge to providers of any kind are arguably even more crucial than they were before 2020. This inevitably raises the question, does the customer also benefit from this advantage? And if so, how? The following panel will examine the relevance of mice tech providers in collaboration with hotels, venues, agencies, probably DMCs, etc., etc., and event planners like me. So please welcome to the stage, ladies first, Sabine Reise, Managing Director of EMEA of PRISM. PRISM, you probably still know as All Seated, all seated. is it? Yes. Right. Yeah. Choose one. Then we have Gerhard Basem, who is Director of Product Management at Duetto, formerly known as MiceRate. Hello. Hi, Gerhard. Thank you. And last but not least, <laughs> Ralf von Heudung, the founder of VenueSite. Have a seat, my dear. It's wonderful. Where may I sit? Okay. And as you notice, I'm the one moderating this, so on we go. Ah, wonderful. Clock works. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to all of you. So before we start off, we do a little, let's say, elongated elevator pitch. So it's not 30 seconds for each of you, but it's 90 seconds for each of you. <laughs> Please describe to all of us mice pros sitting here the unbeatable arguments for using your service and or application in, like I said, 90 seconds, ladies first. All right, so um, we see at PRISM, we see the digital twin as one of the biggest innovations for the event planning. Um, it is our core to use that digital twin. You can plan inside of it, you can source venues, you, you can um, brand your space, so you can actually recreate everything that you need to plan. And uh, just imagine to meet and collaborate inside of the 3D space and uh, not having to travel everywhere. Sometimes you do, but just to reduce it and just use uh, our tool to efficiently plan. Yeah, very good. That was amazingly fast. <laughs> Ralph, up to you. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, with Venue Suite, we are specialized um, in uh, booking software for meeting and events. Mm -hmm. uh, we've built a uh, MICE booking engine that basically helps hoteliers, hotels, get more bookings directly via their own website, which saves on commissions, of course, for OTAs and intermediaries. Right. And we basically automate the entire process from getting the booking in from the website up to the digitized automated proposals based on real-time availability and pricing up to the uh, invoicing part. So basically everything that can be optimized will be optimized mm -hmm. and the advantage is that you can focus your time on the personalization um, by doing things with a little bit of tooling on the side. Wonderful. And he also stayed within the 90 seconds very well. Gerhard, last but Thank but not you least. very much. Uh, well, MyThread is the first fully automated revenue management system for the meeting and event business. And we combine revenue management with booking automation, like uh, Ralph, do, uh, Ralph does. Um, so we kind of yield meeting and event space on the rule-based pricing, but also on the algorithm-based pricing. Mm -hmm. And um, as we are now part of Duetto, as you mentioned, uh, we are able to do total revenue management. So we can take rooms into consideration, we can take meeting and ascent uh, events, we can have all the ancillaries, so do total profitability and total revenue management for a hotel or for each other venue. Very well, and even within the 90 seconds. The good thing is all of you three gave an answer that made my idea of the next answer which is what's, what's the added value for me, for example, as an event planner, using your tools. You all answered that already. Thank you very much for that. No, I didn't ask for that in the first place. <laughs> but let's move on a little bit and let's dive a little bit deeper, starting off with Davina again. Prism, like I already said, formerly known as All Seated. I had to look that up really to find it out because All Seated is a tool that I know. And Prism, what's that? Now I got it. Same thing with you later on. So PRISM seems to be a one-stop solution for an event planner like me and for all of you in the room. 
every aspect of a design of an event space can be displayed in 2D, in 3D, every aspect. And that's the question that I have now for her, because but what about the technical aspects, PA, lightings, stages, even people? Well, forget about the people, but <laughs> at least PA, lighting, stage, so all these things that our customers would like to see, right? When you plan an event, they say, okay, where's the stage? How do I look on it? Okay, does it take too much space, et cetera, et cetera. All these things the customer wants to know. Uh, pardon me, at the moment, I couldn't find any of these elements on PRISM yet. Okay, I didn't book the demo, to be honest. But <laughs> judging from I found what so on the homepage is, I can't find it and can't, obviously can't use it. But we all know these aspects need to be vitally included in every pitch, in every offer, in everything that we do towards the customer. So, how does it look? Um, yeah, so generally speaking, we want to be as sustainable as a platform as possible, meaning right. that we have all possible um, aspects of the venue, that, um, of the planning process that you actually need to represent that event in a 3D environment. Um, for those of you who maybe know a little bit about 3D, um, that is also the challenge with 3D, because you would need to create those 3D objects for the library. You would right. also always have to focus on um, the size and the performance of the system, what you bring in. So just knowing that a chair can have uh, whatever, 200,000 polygons, but it can also have 200 polygons. And just, you know, always having that aspect in mind that you want to, um, you know, you want to build in 3D, but you want to be also efficient in 3D and not just see everything uploading. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are always focusing on uh, how are we creating 3D objects and how do we get them into the system. And um, we're actually looking into um, AI possibilities. Ah, um, yes, um, so that is an, uh, a, gr um, a huge uh, part of uh, our lab um, development part. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at um, how can we bring in objects to the library in a way more easy manner. So that you just, you know, with your phone, uh, take a picture, upload this to the system. We all have seen it, but we haven't seen it in a 3D, real 3D environment where you actually are inside and then you can put in whatever, two or 300 or even 3,000 chairs mm -hmm. in addition to the technology. Okay. And so, so that is, that is um, we're looking into this and the AV and technology is also um, something that we can always create and uh, build, but a, a real precise planning um, meaning that you know, really detailed uh, stage planning will always be uh, in an in architectural way necessary in a CAD tool, for example. So you'd play in, um, plan in all the details in there. But what you're doing there can then be extracted and then imported into our system so that you get a visual in, of the environment of what it, the appearance look, might, okay. might look like. Sounds, sounds to me so you, that you obviously have a plan how, how to do that, yes. how to achieve that as well. Yes. Because apart from that, also it is a pretty cool tool, to be very honest, as, as judging from what I could see up to now. Okay, so even for me, that would mean I'm capable, and that's actually one of the main reasons why she is here today, because we all know the problem, site inspections, they use time. They use, um, you know, uh, time, efficiency. Efficiency, thank yeah, you very much. And, and, was, and obviously losing, costs. <laughs> exactly. I was losing my vocabulary, pardon me. Um, exactly. All of these things can be diminished by, by using that. Actually, just a quick question to the room. Imagine you would have a software like this. Imagine you would be able to show your customer on a screen in a 3D model how his location look like, how the setup will be looking like, how the tables will be looking like, even the tabletop would be looking like. Do you think that's something that you could sort of convince your customer use? Yes, no? And, and then go yeah. one step further. This is what we do, collaborate inside of it. Exactly. Just meet inside, discuss everything inside, talk, uh, talk the whole event through, take notes in the space, you know, tag the areas where you say, this is the buffet, this is the stage, and then just have that full information um, after that collaborative um, meeting within the space. Now comes the event planner within me saying, listen, I need to collaborate with my customer in the setup of the event. Oh my God, what a pain in the peep. Because that would mean, now I want this chair standing here. <laughs> I want this one over here, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea is brilliant. Okay, let's move on. Thank you, for, thank you so much. 
yeah. all and the you time can, and, you, and you can also lock them down in the end, right? That's, that's the, true. That's the benefit. You just, that's okay, true. This that's is, true. You have, you've, this is, you've given your consent. This is what you've... And you probably could lock them down to. faster. Yes. That's true. Gerhard. Yes. Judging from my own experience, a lot of event locations still don't have a clue about their break even, let alone their revenue when it comes to pricing of their services. So it feels more like a, what are the competitors around me are doing? Your opinion on that and what's, how can your tool help me in making the right decision? You're absolutely right. When, what, that's what we experience when we go to hotel properties and uh -huh. we ask them for their cross margin of F&B packages and everything and they actually don't know because they haven't realized yet that uh, meeting and event space, this could be a profit center. So you don't have meeting and event capacity to fill up your hotel rooms. True. You can actually make money with meeting and events. Um, so that's what we are showing them. And if you ask them, well, um, how's the booking situation for September? They're like, we are so proud, we are fully booked. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's the worst thing to hear uh, because actually there's a lot of demand coming up right. until September. So this is profit you could really uh, make a lot, um, lot more money on. Okay. Um, so that's what we actually train hotels to do. Um, to think about how, to, how they want to have their pricing strategy. And the thing is, most of them don't do revenue management in meeting and event spaces yet because to put this to an operational uh, part, like you need to have skilled uh, employees to do so. So this is why we combine, uh, combine it with booking automation. So actually you just click all the items together, like in a, in a shopping cart, mm -hmm. and uh, you have everything, and everything is yielded in kind of a very good or perfect way. And so you don't have to train your people on how to calculate, you just have to train on how to use the tool. Okay, but don't we get into, don't we get into a situation where that probably could mean that offers that I do get from a location or a hotel that you're working, that's working with uh, MySTRADE, that they are more or less standardized? Because from the, from the other side, from the planning side, right, I have a classical meeting, right? We all know a meeting, there's nothing, nothing much creative around it. It's just tables, chairs, an F&B package, and that's it. Okay, maybe a little, little bit of uh, technical equipment, but that's all that we need. But when it comes to, for example, <clears throat> a classical business event, right? I have an hotel. Let's say we have a hotel with a, with a really, really good event space that we really like on, and our customer likes, okay? And I even... Add, probably I'm in the, in the good situation that I can offer the hotel the room nights as well because then only I'll get the event space. <clears throat> but what about that situation? So I only come to you and say, okay, this is the event space and probably the hotel even has a good setup that they could offer. Is that even sort of, say, includable into my street so they could work out faster to my, into my direction an offer like this? Is that possible or is that too far away? You no, know, it's, it's not that far away. We just did it. Like, you can go on a website and put everything together like you want it. Okay. And you, you speaking of, like, a business dinner, let's talk about weddings. For example. The highest conversion rate you have with booking automation is weddings. Because if you look at the customers there, they're younger. They don't want to take or use their phone. Like, I'm thinking of myself. Yeah. I just want to look it up online. I want to have a price on the bottom line, and I want to know it immediately. I don't want to send an RFP to them. Then it takes them one or two weeks to answer. I just want to have the information right away. And Amadeus did a study, and I figured out if you are the property with the first offer, um, the possibilities yeah. that you receive that RFP is 70% higher than being the second or third one. That's good news for me because weddings for event planners are, well, let's say, not the easiest customer. No. To put it very politely. I like that, like the pain in the bee. Like yeah. the pain in the bee, yeah. exactly. Right. It's, <laughs> it's almost, it, it's actually quite the same. So, okay, all of you planning a wedding, don't come to me. 
Talk to him. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'd like to add something to that. If that's okay. Because I think right. it's a very interesting point, no. uh, Gerard. That yeah. it, indeed, if you respond fast, within, within one hour, the, the success rate of converting a deal is basically 70%. If you wait between one hour and 24 hours, it goes down to 60%. If you wait longer than 24 hours, your success rate of closing a deal goes down to 30 to 35%. So, wow. so speed is of essence. No matter how many attributes are there, the okay. tooling can take care of that. Yeah. It's already there, yeah. including hotel rooms, including equipment. Everything is there, but you need to make sure that you have the tooling in place so that the automated stuff can be done right away. The booker, especially post-corona, yeah. does not want to wait for information. So yeah. if you ask me, what is a tech? What does it do for the mice business? It brings both closer together, closer together. and right. enables them to communicate faster. One could, one could guess that he already knew what I wanted to ask him, don't we? <laughs> it was an addition. <laughs> no, that was good. It was perfect, perfectly well. Yeah. So I let my, just, just keep it with the, one, with, with the last one that I have on my list, for you, for example. Venue site. All-in-one solution, only for hotels? Yes, no? No. No, because no. of? No. Well, all in one solution, I already get, uh, get goosebumps on my arms if I, if I hear that, because the moment that you do everything or you try to do everything, you're doing everything a little bit off. Yes. So we, at least in our company, we decided we want to do the, the booking software for meeting and events, particularly for, for meeting locations. Right. And of course, hotels have meeting facilities. Yeah. So that's one of our targeted uh, ideal customer profiles. Yeah. But the one thing you do, you do it right, and for the rest, you can partner up. For instance, I can imagine in due course that I'm going to work together with Duretto. I was if about they to have say a that. formula uh, for, well, maybe AI powered on, on dynamic pricing. Uh, we are introducing it ourselves, okay. but if they are going to be better at dynamic pricing, let's hook up because the systems are nowadays much more open that you can help each other out instead of having a closed ecosystem trying to do everything on your own. Right. At least that's my uh, hope and wish for the business that we can then uh, yeah, partner up and, and, and do that in the end for the booker. Very good. Let's come back a little bit more to the, to the planner side, right? Um, your tool, okay, understood, goes to the venue or to the hotel. We can put everything in that we need to put in there to be able to, uh, to be able to, to hand out an offer faster, to react faster to an RFP, et cetera, et cetera. Check. Sabine, double check. <laughs> what you offer is for our side of the business perfectly well. And Ralph, as I understood it, you two should discuss very soonly about <laughs> collaborating or yes, why merger not? right there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Join as well. It's no problem. <laughs> Just we don't have a how. diagram. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Okay, so do we have any, any kind of additional issue that could be, judging from where you come from, what your products are, that are of any additional advantage or that have any kind of more added value to the planner side, not the hotel, not the location, the planner side. Weddings, uh, okay, we had that. What? <laughs> are you an event planner? No. Do you wedding. do wedding? Do you do weddings? Social. Location, okay. So you, you have weddings. In, no, you don't. Be glad. <laughs> Very good to see. emotional. Weddings are emotional. Yeah, they are emotional, <laughs> but they're, they're, really, they're really something very interesting within our business. They're very special, uh, very special segments. So they are really good wedding planners that they love to do that. So, okay, let's move on. Excuse me. Sorry for the little excursion. We're running not really out of time, but we're getting close. So once again, Think of the planner side. Think of someone like me, right? Who comes to the location, to whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Any additional thing that I should know as a planner about your products that could help me, let's say, having a better communication in general with the desired location, with the desired customer, et cetera, et cetera. Starting with Gerd, please. Well, if you think of revenue management, it's not always about charging more to your customer because of high demand. Mm. We actually want to be as transparent as possible to show him, well, when you're flexible with your date, you some move your meetings one week ahead, or it doesn't have to be the Wednesday, could also be the Monday. I can give it to you a lot, let's say, cheaper um, for another price. So also giving the customer the opportunity to fit their meeting to, or to, to, to match it with the perfect budget. Right. 
and um, also show the customer, like, if you have flexibility, we can also be flexible. Like, if you, and this is why we put revenue management and booking automation together, because if you do revenue management, and for example, you have a very high rate on Wednesday, you should send over like the regular PDF file as a quote, and it says it's, it says it's ninety dollars per person for the meeting. They're like, this hotel is crazy. I can never go there. But if you have a booking engine and a calendar goes up and says like, well, it's ninety dollars on Wednesday, but it could be fifty-five on Monday. They were like, okay, my my time slot is quite expensive. So we also ah. give the customer the opportunity to fit their budget into probably their offer or kind of that. And obviously, if I don't get you wrong, uh, it gives the planning side a little bit more uh, transparency about what is happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Sabina, how about um, you? So we are already... Oh, actually, sorry. Sorry for interrupting you. One quick question. Who's using Prism at the moment the most? It's, uh, it's everything. We have a user uh, community of about 100,000 users, mm -hmm. um, uh, 2,500 registrations per month. So it's, it's, uh, it's a community of all parts of the venue process, uh, the event process, uh, meaning that you have planners, you have uh, vendors, suppliers, rental companies as well. Um, and venues and uh, hosts even. And hosts is what we are defining as the wedding planners or the private ones, like the social again. planners. But just imagine um, accessing, you know, as an advantage, accessing this huge database um, that we already offer mm -hmm. and extending this now to the 3D um, uh, database that we are planning to do. And imagine further that, you know, at one place, at one um, in one time, in a little, very little time, you will have the opportunity to just scan your space yourself, right? Go in, scan the space, upload this to our system, plan inside of it, mm -hmm. and just you know constantly grow that database um, that everyone can access and then collaborate inside. Right. Interesting. Sounds like sounds really good to me. Okay. Same question to you, dear Ralph. What's yeah. probably the thing that I think the, the, the data is, is a topic that we also yeah. should mention because yeah. in the end, it, the data is important. If you, if you have certain tooling in place, the starting point of your booking process right. is, is, is online. That means that everything that you do can be measured, can be seen, and basically, we will know that you are you. Cool. Yeah? The, the hotel or the venue that you're booking. <laughs> So basically, if you want to configure your, your, your meeting or event, yeah. we're, we already know that you we did that know. last year and how right. you want your setup and how many rooms you want, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, that'll be reduce the stress of the booking process yeah. because we can really get to know each other. And we know beforehand already what your preferences are on all the attributes. And that, that attribute-based booking, that is something that is now not a problem anymore. Yeah. I hope that everyone on the supplying side is listening very closely now because this is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Make the processes easier, yeah. make them more comfortable, make them more transparent. That's a r very important thing. That was the reason why I asked you earlier these fantasy prizes, some locations, even hotels have for their meeting and event spaces for a place like... I had that example once for a, for a hotel in um, Cologne. Right. Uh, they had a wonderful space for 200 people, and I compared the prices, uh, compared the price that I received from the hotel with other locations in the city, and said, "Listen, you have to explain me one thing: you're more than 200 percent more expensive than even the most expensive location I found for 200 people. So please give me, give me any kind of clue. How do you come on this price?" And the hotel said exactly that: what Gerhard just stated before. We don't know. Was the thing when I started working at Duetta and kind of to explain to them how the system worked? They asked me, "Well, like, how does revenue, no, no, like, like venues, come up with their prices?" And I said, "Well, they have this this famous dice in their cupboard. Right. I learned them when I interned at a hotel. <laughs> and you just roll the dice. You're like, that's a stage. Yeah, it's about 10 square meters. Let's do 300. <laughs> yeah. They don't calculate. Yeah. And so two is like this." Um, gives you the opportunity to kind of do a real calculation mm. and also give discounts or raise or lower the price by a certain pattern, by some rules, and you don't have to come up with prices. Right. Actually, you start calculating them. 
Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because the, the research that we've done um, with our partners last year in the post-COVID era, um, we analyzed about 15,000 online bookings of hotels that have an online tool. And, and the, the research basically shows that um, the hotels, because it's a human thing to do, they, they prefer not to do it. So basically, we all know yeah. that Tuesdays and Thursdays yeah. are the, the, the days that everybody can book three, four, or five times, at least for meeting and event spaces. However, they're using a fixed rate for that. Right. Now, how crazy is that? If we have the historical data that we know the Tuesdays and the Thursdays, or the week before a holiday, is extremely high in demand, that we can just increase it with a little bit. It doesn't have to be straight away 200 euros per person higher, but just a little bit, can already increase uh, the, the, the healthy profitability for, for a hotel. And that's just very little effort, and we all know that it's happening, but you can just yeah, do it and set it and forget it. <laughs> that's pure profit. Like I said, meeting and event space can... And you miss that profit, that's yeah. the point, right? Yeah. Leave it on the table. Yeah, exactly. Leave it on the table. You miss that, because coming back to that, to that place in... Uh, no, I won't say the name. Don't pay me, I won't say it. Uh, coming back to that hotel in, in Cologne, after that situation that they told me, no, we do, we do not know how we come on their prices, because I said, listen, do we have any kind of F&B package within there? No, no, that's just for the room. Ah, okay. And the equipment I need? No, you have to rent that additionally. But we have a, an exclusive partner, you have to work with him. Yeah. Mm. All right. And then you add up the whole thing and combine that to another competitive location, Say, listen, sorry, but my budget with you, with that hotel, is, let's say, 50,000. If I book with you, I have another location, same services, same quality, more flexibility, probably working with a wonderful system like yours that we can work in advance, and the price is only at 20,000, which is still a lot of money, but at least it's, it's something that, that I never really understood. So I'll make sure. I'm having a look on the watch. Yeah, um, we're pretty good in timing, actually because of all three of them were much more into the whole topic of this pretty little round that we had here on stage than I had expected. So thank you firstly for all of this. So we asked the audience some questions. Exactly, thank you for an, obviously an audience that l liked to listen to us. I saw some heads nodding in, in between. So at least you know where to find these three. I, I think you will stay a little, Few yeah, minutes we're longer. happy so to answer some If questions. you have any direct questions to all the three, uh, uh, to one of the three of them, please take your time doing so. We're a little bit early now. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for your effort, your time for being here. That was really a good one. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm.